word. Oh, of, no, no, I'm going to give you some men. data. You're going to be shocked. So I'm going to give you this data and then you can continue. So there is um, how many percent people in the worldwide make more than $250,000? Very, very low. 5% right. worldwide. Yes. What's the percentage people make more than a million dollars worldwide? So that 5% is men and women makes. 1%? 1%? 1% makes more than uh, one, million. Uh, 1 million. And how many of them are women? 0 0.04. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is so tiny. And then yeah. also, also we live, let's say, in California, which is like, you know, the lifestyle might be different and there's lots of opportunity for the female to get to these levels of like in a corporate and being entrepreneur and do any of this and just the, the type of the problem that we get into it just really yeah is the challenges that we haven't dealt with it before you know yeah this is ongoing this is ongoing and the way the economics or the financial world is is um shaped is going towards that anyway mm -hmm. i mean there are some changes very very few changes but we know that equality is not achieved yet uh -huh. and and that's the reason that men want to keep the power they want to be the the breadwinners money makers because it gives them the control so is that is, so is that what the relationship is about for a man to be in control so for a man to be responsible for all of it, so then yes, we both are in a relationship. Well, well it depends on how two people wanting it to be mm. or defining it to be. No, no, in general, I'm talking about worldwide. You Definitely see, not. as we just talked Definitely about, we still not. didn't have yeah. a president yeah. that is a female right. Right. because men still want to keep yeah. the control of yeah. everything. So it's like, is that what in general a man thinks? A relationship okay. is about a man controlling I, a woman? I can, I can blame women for this as well. Mm. Until, how many, sure. uh, until how many years ago a female dared to just be a candidate for the U.S. presidency? Yeah, or even having a desire to work. Right. I'm still, like, right. I have employees and they're female and right. they're like, no, nah, I don't want even to want to work over time, let's say. Mm -hmm. Like, let my right. uh, uh, husband go yeah, take care of the rest of the meal. That's a mentality that continues. Absolutely. And, and then we that, both are that's at what fault. we see. We yeah. both are faulty. Yeah. I'm just talking about like, you know, in general. Um, once in my practice, I, I saw a woman that came to my practice and her complaint was, my husband is not really caring about me, mm. is not paying attention. Sometimes I want my husband just to hit me. <laughs> and, I, and I said, excuse me, C could you repeat that again? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. and, and yeah yeah I, I i love my husband to hit me to yell at me my husband doesn't do that uh -huh. so th this is what we are talking about yeah so Preference. there are women out there that they believe yeah. the love and the care is mm -hmm. in the eyes of someone who is hitting or mm -hmm. is yelling or is just uh, imposing control and mm -hmm. uh, power Correct, but it also, also, is that how you were raised? Is that how a woman is raised for like thousands of years? I, I was raised like that. I was raised like that. My mom and dad constantly put me in a box. They're like, you're too much. You know, the first thing comes to my head every time I do something wrong and or something mm -hmm. bad in their mm -hmm. dictionary, Helen, you're too much. Mm -hmm. So I think I was 32 years old. You were stepping that I, beyond the boundaries. Yeah. Our boundaries. Yes. Yes. Society boundaries. Culture Religion. Boundaries. Religion. Culture. Boundaries. Mom and dad. When I was 32 years old, sorry, I said, fuck it. Mom, dad, divorcing you. I am going to be officially bad. I am going to be officially out of box. I'm just going to do whatever I want because I just can't do this anymore. I lived for you. For your happiness. Mm -hmm. I have no idea who I am. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I, I don't even know what is good or bad. <clears throat> I just know I'm doing whatever you want. The lack of knowledge makes people to stay in the box. Yes. Uh, lack of ability to make money or not yes. having enough money yes. makes people to stay in the box. Yes. You cannot come out of the box. Mm -hmm. I can tell you when come out of the box for me yeah. and then go back. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't pay. Yeah. Yes.
So, yes. so that's 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 how it is. And religions and uh, cultures and laws um, all made this possible. Mm. Mm. That, you yeah. see, and this is why independent woman who makes lots of money because now I can make the rule. And when you say, "Oh, you cannot do this," I'm like, mm, "I think this is okay. I can do it." So, so independent makes... women can be scary for men. Yeah. And um, again, I, I've, I've seen this in another um, case in my uh, office that the the girl was a lawyer that she was making money. Uh, the man was making money too. He wasn't poor or anything, but. They got into trouble after they got married that the woman is a lawyer, is a powerful person, can think, can ask questions, uh, is not going to accept everything as you say, is going to just question yes. some of those. And then also is not just be uh, give me money, give me, mm. give me money to buy groceries. So they got divorced after three months mm. because the man couldn't handle that. Yeah. Couldn't live with that. What can we do? What can we say to help this? Because we want, in one hand, I want my daughter to be strong. I want my daughter to be independent. But also, I want my son and like like our sons in the society to be able to handle girls like that. What can we do? What can message we can send out in order to help this process? Because our next generation, we want to have a strong woman. We want to have our daughter to think. We want them to have their own opinion. We also want to teach the men how to learn how to deal with the stronger men. Yes, very good question. It just starts from us. It just starts from our homes. It just starts how me as a father, you as a mother, are acting in life and are handling the life or sometimes even talking about other people talking about your children boys don't cry mm. something wrong mm. boys can't cry what's wrong with crying yeah don't be like your sister sensitive mm. oh you can be sensitive too there is yeah. nothing wrong with being sensitive or crying so we are making some stereotypes yeah. that we are not even aware of it that we are pushing that old mm -hmm. uh, uh, culture or Correct. way of living Correct. but we, we might be against all of that but how we are living it is very important mm -hmm. that how we can be role model mm -hmm. to our kids that I don't want to talk about other people like that. I don't mm. live it like that. And I don't want you to live it like mm. that. So empowering them. Mm. There are some activities that we might say, you know, my daughter can't do, but my son can do, mm. or my son cannot do, and my daughter can do. Mm. This is wrong. Mm. You can do whatever you want. Explore. See what's out there. Pick it for yourself. Yeah. I support you. I help you. Mm -hmm. So, and then if it comes from a father or a mother, yeah. that means for them, mm -hmm. they get it. Yeah. And then that this way, hopefully generation after generation, things can change. Yeah. But I know that there are people that are still, they don't believe some activities are okay for girls. Some activities are okay or are not okay for boys. These kind of mentalities are the ones that are holding us back. Correct. We have to start it from our home. Mm. Uh, the way we talk to each other, a, a man to a woman, a woman to a man, how we address other people in the community, in the restaurant, in, in, a, in a shopping center, how we address people. Mm -hmm. Women could be very good drivers. Mm -hmm. Why was, oh, look at that woman driver. Look how she is driving. All women drive like <laughs> this. Okay. So when, when we do that, then our, our children are watching, are hearing, yeah. are listening, and they get that. Okay, so women are not good drivers. Yeah, it's like already, you know, labeled as you're like disabled. Right. You know, like oh. this is the ability that you can learn. Right. So, so these kind of stereotypes and um, phrases we use, we have to be careful. We have to live the way we believe is right. And we mm -hmm. want our kids to live their way, to have that freedom mm -hmm. to choose for themselves, to be who they are, who, mm -hmm. what they want. You know, with, with schools, for example, okay, my son, you cannot get into art because you're, you're going to be a provider and you have to be a lawyer or a doctor and you make all the money. Mm. You have to go and make money. But my daughter, eh, whatever, you, you don't want to go to a school, that's okay. You know, yeah. your husband is going to pay for everything. Yeah. Again, some of these phrases, some of these no. notions no. that are very destructive 
it mm. gets the motivation from them yeah. no my son can be an artist yeah. if he likes he can go and do art music whatever he wants to do yeah. who am i to tell him what to do and what yeah. not to do yeah i can tell him to be a human to be a lovable loving human respectful respecting everybody else mm -hmm. i can teach him those and i can be you know verbal and vocal about it but i cannot just tell him okay you have to go study this or study that he can choose for himself mm -hmm. my daughter can choose for herself correct correct even um i'm gonna get to the topic of gender identity mm -hmm and orientation things like that that a lot of people are still in the western countries they are against that liberty okay. or even in our culture middle east and so on even worse so who am i you can choose whatever you want to do and what makes you happy correct. you can be who you are correct and there is no difference between a girl or a boy in choosing that way correct you see like how like how much we care if someone else is let's say gay like in what however format whatever vocabulary you want to use like why like why is it important to us right what that right. person does mm -hmm. in their house why is it our business right you know i ask these questions from some of the parents of these children that they come out mm -hmm. and the parents they uh, they go ballistic and they go really angry and mad and disappointed and depressed and so on and i ask them uh what's wrong what what, what is really bothering you mm -hmm. some people they gave me a very good answer and that was you know what i'm worried for their future they're gonna be hurt they're going to be isolated. Their family and friends are going to leave them. I'm worried how troubled they're going to be in life. Okay. Okay. That, that somehow makes sense because you're a parent and you want the best for your child. And you feel like if this person is from the LGBTQ community is going to have some extra hassles and difficulties. Mm -hmm. But how much you want to um, control their happiness? I, I want to say even as a straight person, you go through all those difficulties. Right. If your parents, they don't teach you how to deal with your emotions, with your right. emotional needs, you still have needs, a bunch of difficulties, bunch in front of difficulties of and right. struggles to mm -hmm. go through. So I think you should really, as a parent, you should care about like how in their self-esteem yeah the self-confidence yes. their 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 identity let them shine let and them shine. with whatever gender that they whatever have. they are yes. and then they're gonna deal with whatever comes to their way yeah. they yeah. have the power to deal with those yeah. uh people that they are gonna hurt them or do or say something yeah. hurtful or whatever yeah. they do yeah so you're right, you know, making them empowered, helping them, that's our job as parents to do it for their, yeah. our kids. And then they can choose whatever way they want to go. Yeah. And the boys and girls being equal, yes, mm -hmm. their bodies are different. Uh, they, they, they learn about their bodies and how their body go through changes and so on. Yes, that's right. But that doesn't mean that one has some capabilities and the other one doesn't. Mm -hmm yeah can can be a doctor or a lawyer or a president or an artist or a musician yeah that's that's how um we can really help the culture to change and we make the shift to happen if Correct. we live the the right uh, way Correct. ourselves if we lead the right way i think that's so important yeah if like i wish like my parents empowered me mm -hmm. um i wish like the first time i heard that there is think outside the box, I would like 28, 29, something like that. I wish you tell your kids, hey, you know, there is a box that everyone wants you to think within certain like boundaries, not the boundaries, limitations, but look, you can 
um, you can use your imagination and the sky is the limit and you can do whatever mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. and you just let your kids be put them in a sport put yeah. them in art classes mm -hmm. put them in martial arts mm -hmm. let them to feel like strong and like have confidence that they can do extra mm -hmm. uh, you know talents or arts or stuff that boost their confidence mm -hmm. so they can feel good about themselves and they can reflect it mm -hmm. in their lifestyle mm -hmm. so I think that will be like how I feel like that was something that I, w I wish I had it when I was a kid mm. so yeah we are learning we are learning hopefully um, the next generation would be much better uh, than the older generation and um, there are some hobbies that these kids can use can have can enjoy and feel good about it uh, those hobbies could be sports could mm -hmm. be um, art could be anything i really encourage our kids to have more hobbies mm -hmm. even adults to have hobbies my next question exactly mm -hmm. as a you know as a someone as an adult even in a relationship so what is your suggestion about having a hobby is not including the other person like have still your life going on in not, a relationship not, yes oh yes of course listen in an in any happy relationship including marriage uh um both of these people in this relationship need to have their individuality have their bank account their friends their hobbies their music mm. I'm, I'm saying his or her yes music and and friends and hobbies yes so it's a good thing that this person is doing all of these for his own or her own mm. the other person does it as well and then they can do it together whatever mm. they do they want to go out they want to go hiking biking traveling whatever they can do if they are married and they have kids and then they do it with their family so these four things are very very important in mm. a healthy marriage or mm. in a healthy relationship I see. that's very important to have hobbies because hobbies help us to get rid of some of the uh, negative energy if I'm tired the hobby the definition of a hobby is something that is just for me mm. it's not a job it's not something that people yeah. tell me I have to do this. It's for me and I enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. When I'm tired, when I'm depressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm angry, when I do this hobby, mm -hmm. I feel much better. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree with you. Yeah. So that's the hobby. And and hobbies could be different for everybody. Yeah. You know, uh, my, I, my hobby has nothing to do with your hobby. Correct. Uh, you know, it could be art, sports, music again. Cooking. Uh, it could be well I I rather it to be healthy I, I say healthy ethical and legal mm. well for me cooking is definitely a hobby because I might cook two times per year so it's definitely a hobby <laughs> and, 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 it, and it could be very, <laughs> and it could be very healthy as well yes yeah. you know, I'm like so when I'm cooking something in the kitchen, it's definitely a wow. So it's a very unique experience. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, so these, these hobbies are very important. And everybody in a relationship, they need to have their own friends. So maybe I want to just go out with my friends tonight. Correct. And I don't want to come. Yeah. I think it's very important to have your space mm -hmm. and have your sets of freedom so you don't feel choked. Right. Yeah. I think it will your relationship would uh, last longer too. Absolutely. If you still have your life going on, Absolutely. you have your independence in your like financial relationship, emotional outside that relationship too. You can feel good about yourself, then still in that relationship mm -hmm. and enjoy. Um, there are a lot of people in a relationship. They believe when we became uh, one, two of us, we became one. Then there is no other individuality, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna go have my friends and so on. I tell couples that you know what, it's it's for your benefit if yeah. you help with the kids and let the other person to go out and have fun with her or his friends and come back, legal, ethical, healthy. Yes. Um, because when the person comes back is going to be a better spouse mm. it's going to be a better sex partner whatever you want to call it it's going to be much better Correct. because has done that and is is just uh, ready yeah. uh, for you so yeah, hobby is very like... important and in a, in a relationship in a marriage it's very important to keep these 
I want to ask you this question, you know, as you do a couple of therapies, what is the top three problems that you see over and over again? Or maybe what's your first one that you're like, shoot, this constantly happens in everyone's relationship. What do you see? Well, the, if, I, if I want to tell you the general um, topic of the problem is communication. People uh. talk, but they don't understand each other. They uh. don't know each other's language. Uh. They are just talking from their own mind. Huh. Whatever comes to mind, it just comes out without knowing that, okay, how this person is going to feel. Uh, is this person understanding what I'm saying? Mm. Am I too much? Am I too angry? Am I too loud? Am I too slow? Mm. They don't talk, think about that. They just say whatever it comes out and then the other person doesn't catch it. Mm. And then they get mad because they feel like that person understood but is ignoring them. Ah, is not paying attention. Interesting. So that's a problem. And then people go, go into isolation um, and they want to uh, punish each other by giving each other the silence treatment. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh, you should have known. You knew. You knew why I'm quiet? You, you knew why I became quiet because uh -huh. of this and that. So they do not verbalize the problems. Does a man give the silent treatment too? Or is it usually you uh, see it in female? Very good question. Actually, men do it more against the, the, what is out there that women do it more. Really? Why? Because men lack communication skills. Uh. They are less talkative. They don't want to talk. They don't want to talk about their emotions. They don't want to explain everything for you. But women... I, only dated, I think I only dated very, very uh, men that are amazingly good in communication. I'm the one who cannot... Maybe know. maybe that, that's how you pick them. Maybe you yeah. want, you want yeah, a man yeah, yeah. who... Yeah, I think that's how I pick yeah. them. Usually but, they talk way more. <laughs> but usually men are not very talkative because mm. of that left brain hemisphere that uh, in women it's more developed and mm. it's, it's bigger. Uh, so women can talk and explain, can describe even better. They can be very, very good speakers. Mm. But men rather not to talk so much. I see. Then they go into their cave. Uh -huh. okay. They become quiet. Okay. And then the woman should guess what's going on. Really? What's happening. So this is one of the biggest problems I can really? tell you I've seen in my work. How do you that, help them uh, to get them out of that cave? Bring, uh, okay, uh, how, as a therapist or as a, as a Both. spouse? Both, you can give me an <laughs> example. Yeah, as a, as a therapist, I really bring this to their attention, that this is what's happening. Uh -huh. And you expect the person to know exactly what you want, mm -hmm. but you do not verbalize it. Okay. You don't talk about it. Okay. You just expect something. Okay. And that doesn't happen uh, unless you actually make an effort. So bringing this to their attention to help them that what is the best communication is still. Sometimes we can role model in the therapy session of how these two can, can, can talk at home mm. or they can ask questions. Is there anything I can help you with? Can you tell me what's happening? Can you tell me your feeling? Or the other person, I feel this right now. I need help with this right now. Mm. Can you help me understand this? Mm. So these are some of those expressions and phrases that we teach them, them to utilize. Before even going to their communication? To, to yeah. learn how to communicate, to, to learn how to deal with any of these, you know, and you then know bring in examples to therapy. You know, because you said when, so the communication itself, mm. and even you said mm. they, they think they're communicating, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but what phrases to start right. with, so right. that is more, exactly. opens the door, allow the other person right. to be more right. receptive toward Be more it. direct, mm. ask your question, talk about your feelings, Set up the boundaries. Mm. I don't like it when you talk to me like this. Mm. Okay, say it. Have you ever said it? No, but he should know. Mm -hmm. She must know. No, that doesn't work like that. We need to verbalize. We need to talk. And, and uh, so we see, I see a lot of these, these problems uh, that I help them. And then for them that they can prevent uh, things like this or, or communications to be problematic, 
Can I give an example? Because mm -hmm. I am extremely direct. My problem is opposite. I'm mm -hmm. very direct. So when someone talks in a certain way, I'm right there. I'm like, like I don't like the way that you just said this. And then I am Helen is bossy. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, like I don't like it every time I want to say something. You like you find. You, I'm like I just I just don't like it. I want to be able to verbalize it. So right. then how do you uh, go around that? So know, as a woman, when say that, like, no, when a man say that, woman is very, very receptive. Mm -hmm. But as a woman, what, how do mm -hmm. you need to say mm -hmm. it to the man? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you have to know who you're dealing with, how the man is or how the man can take something in. Usually we start with something positive. I like your point. This is a very good point, but I don't like the tone you mm. use to tell me this point. Mm. Mm. Okay, so mm -hmm. you start with something positive, and then and then you you show that uh, um, unhappiness. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, actually, I say when you tell people what you like and you don't like, or how you like it and you don't like it, it's a gift. Mm. Because if it's someone that is working with you, or even it's your employee, it's a gift. So we are working together. Mm. I want to know what you like and you want to know what I like. Mm. In a relationship or in a marriage, it's a gift that we are helping each other that you, you know what I don't like. Mm. So you don't do it next time. Mm. We don't get into trouble. Mm. So it can prevent a lot of difficulties mm. and conflicts and struggles when we are direct and we talk, we say it, we, we don't sugarcoat it and then and then uh, uh, want the other person to just uh, estimate it, to mm -hmm. guess it. No, I can and tell you exactly and directly, respectfully, and then it's a gift. Mm -hmm. It's a gift. I look at it as a gift. Even, even if I tell the person that, you know what, that day when you said that, it bothered me and it hurt me, this is a gift to that person, mm -hmm. to my friend, let's say. Mm -hmm. That because I value this friendship, I want to keep it. Yes, I can just cut it and go away. Or this is exactly what we started off talking. Mm. We invest. invest. We tell each other what yeah. is bothering me. Mm. What, is, what is it that we can do to make this work? Also, some people, they don't like it if you want to tell. They think, oh, it's a conflict and they want to avoid the conflict, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because they, they think, oh, every time you're opening this up, you're mm -hmm. opening like, oh, like, I don't like this or you don't like this. They think we have a conflict. Mm -hmm. So I see that even... Well, no relationship uh, is zero conflict. We all are coming from different cultures, families, right. our behaviors and mindset is different. Mm -hmm. So conflict is a part of it. Mm. It's it's nothing strange. How uh, we look at it. How, we give yeah. meaning to it. Right. Right? Right. Right. So if I so, look at it, if it, this is a conflict, you give the meaning of like, this is uncomfortable. Right. But if I look at it, like I'm building something. So these are the steps. We are getting downs. to know each other. We are we getting, getting to know, to know each, each other. other. We, we, we are getting to work on this relationship and making it better. I say relationship. It's not just romantic relationship. Yeah, yeah, it could be work relationship, 100%. family relationship, yeah. neighborhood, neighbors relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know, that kind of things that it, it's a gift. Yeah. To tell each other that um, how I like it, yeah. you tell me how you don't like it, yeah. and then we work together. Maybe yeah. with another friend, it could be different, totally Correct. different. Correct. You know, one thing I always tell my friends, my loved one, if I'm dating or whatever, I'm like, if I'm coming talking to you, that means I'm valuing you, our relationship. If I didn't care, I don't need to mm -hmm. talk about it. I'm just... I'm like if I if it's too much I was like get the fuck out of here right, basically right but I'm investing my time I have so much interest that I'm sitting here I'm like mm -hmm. you know this makes me uncomfortable like mm -hmm. how do you feel mm -hmm. like how can we make this better so right. definitely right. I think we if we are committed and we want to make things better not even two sisters speak the same mm -hmm. language not mm -hmm. two brothers speak the same language absolutely we have to invest in the way we communicate together exactly Thank you so much, Doctor. I know we only mm -hmm. talked this sub talked about one subject <laughs> and have a million other things that I want to say, but I don't know why. I just felt like, oh, let's talk about a relationship and communication in that field. 
That felt good. That felt yeah. good, especially uh, this is our first time we are meeting each yeah. other. We are sitting down talking about relationship yes. and communication. Yes. I think this was a very good, a smart uh, pick yeah. for our talk. And yeah. uh, this was really good. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you uh, for I coming. I hope there are other opportunities we can discuss more things. Oh, probably together. 100% yes. And we want to have you more even in our podcast. Whenever you, ha- like, you have free time, you, you can give us another hour in here and there we would love to pick your brain in all this you recorded 400 video with him that means there's too many <laughs> subjects i can bug you with <laughs> that's yeah. true all right all thank right. you very much so um thank you so, so much again for being with us uh, at the film fatal by helen uh, with dr payman raufi and uh, thank you thank you very much for having all me right. and thank you uh for tuning in all right